Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, welcome back to another episode, and to an episode a lot of you have asked me to make. Uh, I'm sorry we're in uh, dark times, difficult times at the moment, but hopefully we can be positive, uh, we can talk a little bit about coronavirus, and we'll be answering your questions. I've had so many questions sent in to my Instagram, uh, at Dr. Alex George, um, so many questions, thousands of questions on different topics. I'm going to try and answer as many as I can and give you an insight if I can. Um, I am an AE doctor working in London. Uh, I've been working on the front line uh, during this time and I continue to, to do so. Currently, I'm really well, displaying no symptoms, uh, wearing protective uh, equipment and following all the kind of uh, procedures that we need to to stay safe. Um, I would say the department's getting busier. We're getting cases of coronavirus coming into the hospital. Um, a small percentage of the population we know uh, are becoming unwell or fighting well with it uh, and we're seeing that particularly elderly and those in vulnerable groups um, are requiring our input in the hospital and a small percentage requiring things like ventilation. So I'm going to answer some of your questions. Uh, let's try and be as positive as possible. Um, we know the virus for most people who um, uh, catch coronavirus and become infected with coronavirus uh, will ha have a mild to moderate illness and make a good recovery. Um, you know, 20 to 30 percent will have this, or even 40 percent. Uh, there'll be a percentage who have uh, the fever, the shortness of breath, and are quite under the weather for a week or so and make a good recovery. A small percentage, maybe 10 to 15 percent, who have a more serious illness. Uh, and we know the mortality rate remains to be around 2% at the moment. So I don't want to be scaremongering. Um, I, there's a lot of stuff out there that I think is frightening people. Uh, and we'll try and give you some factual information uh, of what we know to date. Something I will say is that this is an evolving topic. We don't know all the answers at the moment. So I can only tell you what I know today, as of today, and as of when this video goes out, uh, what I understand and what I know. Uh, I'm of course uh, an AE doctor, but I'm a junior doctor. I've been working for four or five years now. I'm not an expert in uh, epidemiology or virology or um, you know, an expert pharmacist. So I'm giving you information I found from credible sources, including WHO, uh, the NHS, um, uh, Public Health England as well. So let's get into this video. Have a look at some of the questions you sent in. Thank you so much for all the messages. I know a lot of people are worried, so let's tackle them. I've got my uh, mobile phone. I picked ones that have kind of got core themes, uh, ones that you know uh, are coming up again and again, and we'll try and tackle these one by one. Let's start with the first question. Is the news about ibuprofen true? Does it make your response to coronavirus worse? So this has been a massive news story over the last few days. I think it started in um, France, I believe, um, the stories around whether ibuprofen, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, might suppress the immune system somewhat uh, when treating um, uh, you know, fever and, and aches from the coronavirus. There's no evidence that's uh, out there at the moment to say that, that it makes coronavirus or the severity of a coronavirus illness worse. However, as a precaution, Public Health England and in the NHS are now recommending to stick to paracetamol for your fever and aches, uh, to using paracetamol. And those who are taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and have been told to take them by their doctor to continue to take those uh, medications unless they're advised otherwise. There's lots of reasons people take uh, non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatories. Um, but yes, that message here is um, essentially we don't know for sure yet and therefore let's stick to what we do know. Paracetamol is effective for fever and effective for aches and other symptoms like that. Second question. Is it safe to go to the gym? Uh, I've had lots of questions about that and we know particularly while well what's going on, everyone wants to keep fit and healthy, keep their exercise up, it's good for the body, it's good for the mind. I'm a massive advocate on my channel talking about this as you will know. Um, at the moment, because of what's been advised and the social distancing, um, essentially going to the gym would be against that advice. If you think about the gym, you're running around, you're sweating, you're exercising, there's more risk you might cough or put things on the equipment. So uh, sometimes gyms are very busy. With so many people being there, I think it's best to avoid. Uh, at the moment, there's lots of home workouts you can do, some great um, inspiration online of home workouts you can do. Do keep exercising because it's important for the, for the body and also for the mind. So do keep exercising. Why are we doing this social distancing? Um, the coronavirus is already here. So I've seen a lot of people saying this. I think it's useful to discuss maybe where we're at the moment uh, in terms of the phases. So the first phase essentially is where we try and prevent uh, coronavirus coming into the country. And we, we, we isolate people who come from places which have got the virus and therefore try and essentially limit uh, its ability to spread into population. We now know we've kind of passed that phase because 
it is in our population, we know that it's here and it will spread. So we've moved on to the delay phase. What the delay phase means is we are trying to reduce the spread amongst the entire population, control that spread so that we don't overwhelm our public health services, so the hospital and emergency services as such. And so what we're trying to do is by distancing people and taking measures to isolate vulnerable groups, asking uh, over 70s and those with chronic illnesses and those who are pregnant to remain in isolation, that hopefully prevents the risk of as much you know, passing on the coronavirus to those groups. Uh, the young and fit and healthy uh, who catch the virus, and you know, some of us will be catching the coronavirus you know, at some point, um, are likely to have mild to moderate symptoms and be able to you know, uh, get over their illness fairly quickly. However, um, we are trying to also really protect these vulnerable groups, as I'm saying. So we want to control the spread. The, the hospital service, the NHS in this country, uh, is a fantastic service, and I want to say a big thank you to everyone that's working in the NHS, um, and it can cope with a lot, but what we don't want to have is everyone ill at the same time. We want this to be a staggered phase, so that immunity is built amongst the community, uh, and not too much pressure at once is put on the hospital. Next question, when will this all be over? This is a difficult one, and I know a lot of people at the moment, particularly, you know, and I get it, we're all kind of like, oh, this is something we thought would be a few weeks, we don't know how long it's going to go on for, things are being cancelled, um, Glastonbury is cancelled today, or the sporting events being cancelled. It's putting a lot of pressure on businesses and livelihoods, I know that. Um, and so everyone wants to know when will it end. We don't really know, but what we think is that the peak of this is going to be about 10 weeks here in the UK, the peak to the top of this you know, curve you might have heard them uh, talking about in the news. So the climb of the cases, a peak at the top, and then a reduction of cases when we start having immunity in the community. Um, and so the peak is still you know, a couple of months away probably. I think it's very difficult to know how long it's going to go on for, but I think we have to prepare that it'll be um, several months. What we hope is A, that the, the immunity builds up in the community and also that uh, the potential of a vaccine as well. Um, so I don't know exactly when it'll be over, uh, but we're all very hopeful that it'll be soon. If I have asthma, do I need to self-isolate? So um, the government has released uh, more guidance about uh, at-risk vulnerable groups, and it's those with chronic illnesses, um, and in particular respiratory illnesses, immunosuppression, etc. Uh, and if you have a, a chronic asthma, um, then uh, an asthma is a chronic illness, then it is advised for you to isolate and take measures around social distancing. And it's worth checking out the uh, specific advice uh, around that uh, on NHS uh, England on Public Health England's website because there's really good advice, so t check that out. And if you're watching from America, you will have very uh, similar advice on your own platform, so have a look there. Make sure it's a good source of information. Um, so my advice would be to uh, really follow that and make sure that if you are in those vulnerable groups, the pregnant, um, those with chronic illnesses or those over the age of 70, please do strictly follow um, those isolation advice. How long are you contagious for? So there's been a bit of confusion around the 7 day isolation versus 14 day isolation here in the country. What we know is that a large number of people who um, contract the, or, or catch uh, the coronavirus um, after five days you'll show some symptoms. However, some people, there are a significant number of people who take up to 14 days to show symptoms uh, at which point at day 14, at the point of day 14, we believe the risk of passing that on is very low. But up to that point there is a risk. The vast majority will show symptoms at day 7. And so if you live alone in your own home, in your own environment, then the advice is on the day that you have symptoms, set isolation should be for seven days afterwards. And these symptoms are persistent cough or a temperature of 37.8 or above. Uh, so isolation for seven days, after which, uh, as long as your symptoms have resolved, you can then uh, continue uh, and move back to uh, the distancing procedure which we're doing now. If your symptoms continue, we're advising the UK to call the NHS 111 to get advice from them what to do afterwards. If you're living in a house with family or you're with a partner, as many of us are, and you display those symptoms, the whole household needs to be under a social isolation for 14 days. And that is really important because the risk is that you might have it uh, have taken a few days to develop symptoms, but in the meantime, without knowing, you pass it to other members. And so to reduce the risk of it escaping the household in a sense, 14 days is the advice. And the next question which I've had you know, a lot of questions about is, 
what are the risks to those who are pregnant? I know this is a huge concern for people. It has been confusing for people because the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynaecology initially came out and said um, we can't see any evidence for an increased risk um, to those who are pregnant. The latest um, update is that there isn't, doesn't seem to be any evidence there's a risk to those who are pregnant. However, we know that that group of people, pregnant people, are potentially seen as more of a vulnerable group. And therefore, as a precaution, we're asking those to follow the same um, distancing and isolation advice as the you know, vulnerable group. I think it's really important not to spread panic. When you're pregnant, you know, you've got yourself and you've got another life, you're excited um, uh, for the new baby to arrive. And I don't want to cause undue panic and alarm. It's not because there's evidence that the, those who are pregnant are at increased risk. It's a precaution. We're doing this as a precaution. We're saying we don't know for sure, and therefore it's safer if you are pregnant to be um, you know, treated as if you are in the vulnerable group. I hope that answers your question, and please do refer to the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynaecology for more advice, because they do keep updating on that, and that's a very important thing. This, this situation evolves, uh, so we need to keep up to date, uh, look at the latest evidence and guidance. Okay, this is a, this is a good question. Um, and I'm going to do probably a separate video on this as well um, because it is important. How do I look after my mental health when in isolation? This is a great question. So um, obviously a lot of us are going, well hang on, we've got the social distancing, I'm going to be at home for a long time. How do I keep fit and healthy? How do I you know, keep my mental health healthy? I think there's a few things, I'm not going to go into huge depth here because I think it's a separate video, a separate kind of topic, it's a big topic. Um, a few things I'd advise. Plan uh, social contact in the day via telephone, uh, via call, via Skype with other friends in other places so that you're making sure you have regular contact. Talk to people, call your family, call your friends. Do group chats uh, on WhatsApp, do group FaceTime calls as well so you're keeping in contact with people. Exercise is important. Yes, I know that it's kind of like, oh, God, Alex is saying don't go to the gym, but work out at home. There's some great body weight workouts you can do in the home every day, 20, 30 minutes to keep your, you know, your, your mind clear and fresh and keep your body um, uh, healthy too. If you're working from home, as many of you are, plan um, time throughout your day that you're gonna be working and not working. Don't blur the lines. Try and have an office space within the house if possible, even if that's a part of the table, that you sit from a set time to work and when you're out of that space, you're not working. And therefore, there is some level of um, breaking up work from home life. Also, try and read. Uh, take time to listen to music. You know, music is good for happiness and, and mood. Um, uh, read as well, I think that's really good. Take opportunities to learn new things. Maybe pick up that guitar you haven't played in a while. There's plenty you can do, and I'm gonna talk more about that in a separate video. So I hope those are some tips that will help. Next question, and final question. Um, if I have the coronavirus and I'm well enough to be at home, do you have any tips or treatments that you can recommend? So as we know at the moment, there is no specific treatment for coronavirus. We haven't got a treatment to treat that virus itself. However, what we do know is there's a lot we, there's a lot we can do to treat the symptoms that we have from it. So the fever, we can use paracetamol um, to bring down the temperature. And the second important thing, and these are the two, these are the two really important things, hydration. If you're having a temperature and you're unwell, you tend to evaporate and lose water because you're hotter, basically. Um, and so we can easily become dehydrated. I would advise having a big water bottle, maybe a litre water bottle, and making sure you're drinking several litres a day, that you are constantly drinking water. And then when you're going for a wee, you're making sure your pee is straw-coloured or nearly clear. Keep hydrated, that's so, so important. Also, eat well. Try your best to make sure that you're um, eating plenty of food, mixture of vegetables, uh, so fruit and veg, uh, as well as your protein and your carbs and your fats. It's important just to rest and sleep and allow your body to recover. If you do become more unwell, um, or you have a chronic illness and your, um, your condition becomes to get worse, please do call the NHS 111 for advice uh, or 999 in an emergency. As I said, I don't want people to have panic. I'm doing this video to address some of the questions that you've sent in, but for the vast majority of people, this will be a mild illness. I hope this video has been useful. Uh, thank you to everyone that's been watching the previous ones. Uh, please subscribe to the channel.
I'll be doing more updates as the weeks and months go by, so please do subscribe to the channel. I hope this has been uh, useful, and again, as I said, please remember I'm making this video with what I know in the moment, at this time, uh, things do change, and so keep an eye for the latest updates and guidance. I'll keep you in touch. I'll be doing lots more videos and advice as well on my Instagram, that's at Dr. Alex, at DR Alex George, uh, and my TikTok as well is the same handle, so check that out for advice and videos, etc. Take care everyone, stay safe, and remember to wash your hands. Washing your hands is so important. Um, it's the number one thing we can do to prevent this um, spreading. So hand, hand washing, hot or cold water with soap. Hand sanitizer if hot or cold water with soap isn't available. Uh, and make sure that you're washing hands for at least 20 seconds. Thanks everyone, take care and goodbye.